Good morning. It's 10 o'clock. That means it's time for Tom and Shane, uh, Business and Politics. Happy to join you, or happy to have you join us, I should say. <laughs> it's April Fool's Day. Uh, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna pull any pranks on you today, we promise. So we're just gonna do the uh, normal stuff that we always do. Uh, we put up videos that help small business owners or people want who want to start their own businesses or people who are just uh, thinking about uh, getting into a business. So, uh, but today uh, you may have an unusual uh, product or service. So today we're going to talk about how to market and promote uh, the unusual, uh, the unusual products out there. So uh, Shane, everything, you're in Canada. Everything in Canada is unusual. <laughs> oh, I, I was going to say, you know, usually people in Canada claim nothing's unusual here because, you know, they're, they're, there's no outrage about anything. So you have to have unusual things for people to be outraged. We're just, you know, calm, collective, non-thinkers. Yeah, that's uh, that's the case. So, well, what we want to we want to start with is what is unusual anyway. And uh, uh, whenever I think about this, I think about the uh, Smokey and the Bandit movie with uh, Burt Reynolds and Sally Field, and they're getting to know each other in this movie. And um, Burt Reynolds is talking about country western singers that Sally Fields never heard of, and she's talking about Broadway shows that uh, Burt Reynolds has never heard, heard of. And Burt says, uh, when you tell someone something, it depends on what part of the United States you're standing in as to how dumb you are. So <laughs> what that means is that <laughs> something that's unusual in one part of the world may not be unusual in another, Shane. That's right. It's really the product or service that determines what is unusual. And uh, it's your perception of it or the mm -hmm. one that your, your uh, uh, customer has of it. That's why services and, and products are so important because yeah. that's what makes uh, your business. But it all uh, fascinates and interests your clients. So you have to create that fascination uh, that your client should have for your uh, product, mm -hmm. not only to use themselves, but to tell other people about it. Yeah. Well, you hit it right on the head because it, it isn't that a product is unusual. It's your perception of that product being unusual. And, you know, when you think back to uh, when we first started cell phones, Xboxes, uh, whatever, you know, name your product, all of those things were unusual at the time. Now they're so commonplace that people are fearful of leaving their home without their, uh, you know, without their phone, without uh, anything else. Uh, but we want to start with uh, education is often the key. And in this one, you can go back to the hula hoop uh, because we had to, you know, this was a brand new product. Uh, we had to introduce it to the public. And not only was it, a, was it a product that had to be introduced, but you also had to show how to use it. And that was the sticky part. And how do you, uh, you know, it'd be pretty hard to... Um, uh, put an, an ad in the paper or radio or something like that as to how to do this hula hoop. You, you really had to see it. And then once your kids saw it, of course they wanted one. So that's right. Um, You'd probably be all fascinated to know that Apple phone, the Apple phone, it's only been around for a decade, 10 years. Yeah. Yet, yet what, what Apple did and it, you know, it's creator was to convince the public how unusual it was. Cell phones had been around for 20 years prior, prior to that. Yeah. But they were able to convince people that it was unusual. It had a better mm -hmm. operating system, better camera, the, mm -hmm. the look, the hold. It, it, I mean, it became the phone to have if you wanted to impress someone. And that's an, an incredible accomplishment because they maintained that for 11 years. People go out and buy a brand new Apple mm -hmm. phone when they don't need to. I mean, I, I, I have, a, you know, uh, the, the phone from South Korea, right? And, and Samsung, yeah. Yeah, that's why well, I didn't want to say it, but I'll advertise. Okay, Samsung. Yeah. So a Samsung, and like my Samsung I had for like five years. So <laughs> I wasn't going to replace it. What do you, you're not going to convince me I need a new car every day, every year. <laughs> Well, I got a I got a new Samsung because I changed providers and uh, they wouldn't support the old phone, so I had to get a new one. So that brings us to our next 
<laughs> our next topic, of course, is some assembly required. And I know you you have daughters, Shane, and growing up, I'm sure you uh, Christmas Eve you put together doll houses or you put oh. together bicycles or you put together something. And uh, you hated doing that. And the instructions were about as clear as Chinese algebra. That's you know, right. I mean, they were they were just. Un, uh, <laughs> it's like that Swedish story you go through and there's only one entrance and one yeah. exit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everything's in a box and it weighs a ton, you know, and everything from beds to computer tables to double decker, but whatever, all the you got to put the furniture together. I mean. Man, I, I I did that one, and I thought, no, I'm not going to do that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what it is. But, but the point is, we we hate change. We don't like uh, we don't like new things. We don't like the social media. You know, I still run into people who say, ah, oh, I'm not getting on Facebook. That's ridiculous. You know, and I I think, well, you're probably afraid of it. You're probably afraid you'll get on there, and I don't know, Jeff Bezos or somebody will, you know, show up at your front door wanting, you know, wanting to know what the heck you're doing. Or whatever they're spying on you, or whatever. But, uh, well, but yeah, branding, branding is important, and that's why we're talking yeah. about it in this case with unusual uh, mm -hmm. uh, products, because branding is becomes everything when you when you're whether it's on a social network platform you're selling it or a brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. You don't want to ruin your branding with your customers. You want to build it, build it constantly, build it, because it's mm -hmm. like a building. You know, it can take three, four, five years to put a building up, depending how tall it is and big, but it can come down pretty fast. Yeah. You, you look at sports and then it's, it took them 50 years to build the brand for it. And in, in what, two years, they, they do, they ruin their own brand. So yeah. I always want you to be on your guard and I always be particular about what you have to say about your product, because that in itself becomes the reason people will remember it. Because guess what? Unless it's that you sell them an unlimited supply, you want to make sure when they run out, they want to buy it again. Yeah, they want to come back for more. Yeah. Well, let's talk about uh, how marketing and promotion work for the unusual because you've got two challenges. One is you've got to introduce the product and convince people that uh, you, you've got to understand what the product is. You know, if you'd never heard the word internet before, uh, you know, it, it would probably take 10 minutes to explain what the internet is and how it works and why you should have it. But you also have to promote and advertise and market the benefits. There's got to be a benefit to a product or a service before anyone will buy it. Right, Shane? That's right. And, and a great example that I'll use because I'm old school is uh, banking. You know, uh, banks have really literally spent, what, 30 years to sell online uh, banking for people. Why? Well, because it reduces their labor costs. Woe mm -hmm. is me, not me. I'm old school. I want paper and pen. I want that monthly statement in the mail. I'm not going to risk someone getting hacked. I've seen too many banks get hacked. I've seen too many stories of, you know, stuff happening on the Internet that you just don't want to be a party of. So, even though they've tried very hard to brand that and sell it to me as unusual, it's too unusual. So sometimes things can be too unusual for somebody old mm -hmm. like me. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah, you are the you are the poster child. Of uh, too old. That's right. <laughs> that's for sure. So, well, uh, you know, as we said, putting uh, putting uh, benefits and products together are uh, what we're you know, what we're talking about here. And we've got to start, of course, with the product and the service or the service, uh, whichever one uh, you have. And, uh, you know, so um, the, the challenge is how do you, how do you find the right people? How do you find your target market and all of that as to uh, starting with the, with the product or service? And, uh, you know, it's, depending on where you are and the advertising opportunities you have, um, you know, this can be, this can be difficult. One of the things we suggest is if you have an unusual product or service, contact your local radio station or TV station. Don't talk to the sales department about buying advertising, talk to the news department and say, Hey, I've got this, you know, when I, uh, when I started my, uh, baby boomer helper website, um, uh, that helps uh, uh, seniors and baby boomers find medical care and veterans and all of that. Uh, I went down to a local uh, TV station. They put me on. 
And they said, hey, this is a new website, it's helpful and everything. And boom, a lot of people came to look at the website. That's right. So try that. Uh, all they can do is say no. <laughs> you, know, you haven't lost anything. Well, that's right. And as we've established uh, in other talks mm -hmm. with you, you know, buying products are an emotional experience. It's either because they want something or mm -hmm. they need it. Yep. So yep. you have to cover both those bounds. And mm -hmm. as, as Tom says, besides taking advantage of opportunities like that, you have to constantly develop the product benefits, constantly remind people why they need it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll see when you watch ads after today and listening to us, that the difference in those type of commercials, commercials that are trying to um, provide you with the, um, this is what you want, as opposed to this is what you need. And there are two types of commercials all together, especially for very rare types of products, because there's some that are very interesting, some that are just mm -hmm. everyday use. Yeah. Well, you see the, you know, there are several products that didn't work, uh, you know, uh, uh, over the years, new Coke didn't work very well. <laughs> that was kind of a fiasco. Uh, you don't have DeSoto or Plymouth or Oldsmobile or <laughs> some of those anymore. Um, you know, just because of uh, changing uh, attitudes and whatever. But uh, the next thing we want to cover is uh, that you have three kinds of customers. Uh, you have the first kind of customer who will always buy something new. They're, they're the people that are lined up around the block waiting for the new Apple phone to come in. Uh, and the second type of customer is the one that says, well, I'm going to wait. And then I will um, see, wait for them to perfect it. You know, then I'll get one. <laughs> and then the third type is kind of in the middle uh, where they say, well, you know, I'll take a look at it and um, maybe make a decision. Maybe I'll buy it. Maybe I won't. So mm -hmm. that middle group is the is the group we want to we want to talk to Shane in our advertising and marketing. And it's the broadest group of demographics because it covers mm -hmm. all of them. Yeah. You have young and old, you have middle aged, But yeah, the, the, the middle span it has a full demographic where on you know the other sides of this one side may have an older demographic which it does usually and the other side has a younger uh, demographic or just a middle-aged demographic so this is why you have these conversations with people that have gone through this and have experienced it so you don't make that mistake go for the middle go for yep. the wider demographic where you reach more people and it's more applicable to the product you're selling that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You want to reach the broadest number of people that are your are your target market. And we're going to talk about target market in just a moment. But before we do that, uh, we need to talk about your message. And if you're giving the wrong message to the wrong people, obviously, then you're going to have a, a, a problem situation. Mm -hmm. um, and also, which market are you are you really trying to attract? For example, uh, your child is probably the end user of Kool-Aid or the hula hoop, but the parents are the, are the buyers. So the parents in that case are the secondary market. The primary market that you want to go after are the kids. And this is uh, go down any cereal aisle and you will see it's kids, <laughs> kids in the cereal aisle. Uh, they got cartoon characters on the boxes. They don't have they don't have how healthy, uh, you know, Captain Chunk is or Captain Captain Chocolate or whatever the hell he is. <laughs> they just have all this stuff to attract kids and say, "Mom, I want that cereal. I want that cereal." Uh, Th Thomas is is brilliant in his analogy because uh, you talk to people in food and they'll tell you the three foot shelf in a store for a new product is absolutely necessary. If a child sees it and starts asking mommy for it and it's not there because they've seen it on TV, then mommy asks the manager, do, do you yeah. have the product? Oh, and he, then the manager gets 12 women that have asked him in one day and he says, better order that, put it on aisle five. You know, that's the way it's worked. It's worked well for 50 years and it's been extremely successful. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Well, your target market, finding the right target market is also key to this, because as we mentioned earlier, there may be, uh, you know, as I say, the wife may do the shopping, but uh, the uh, uh, the man at home is the beer drinker. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you are. And uh, so we've got to find the right people to target on this. Women, in many cases, are the right market because they they do a lot of the day to day 
uh, money spending decisions. So don't discount women as being uh, not your target market uh, based on whatever your product or service is, because that's going to come into the home. And if the woman doesn't want that in the home, <laughs> well, guess what? <laughs> your home life is not going to be happy uh, for very long if you bring something in that they don't want. That's correct. And, and, you know, just to give you an, another analogy, because and uh, not an allergy analogy, uh, I'd give you another analogy is uh chick flicks. We all know what a chick flick is. It's a, it's a film for women. You know, the girlfriends mm -hmm. sit down and have popcorn and lemonade, not a beer like the boys for sports. But in this case, you know, it's the, the analogy here is that uh, uh, finding a target market, you can look at the ads. If, if you're watching an ad and it's a more of a feminine, feminine tilt to it, you know, it's clearly directed at females, at women, mothers, daughters, uh, sisters, aunts, and that's who they're trying to reach. So that's why men sort of tend to turn off ads, not in their mind when they're watching them, because right off the bat, oh, it's a chick ad. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly right. So uh, there's a reason it's a chick ad. That's right. <laughs> there's a definite reason that, that it's a chick ad there. So, all right. Well, uh, to sum up, um, obviously, uh, what we've talked about today is that you you have to um, you have to expose the product in such a way that it has plenty of benefits tied to it that someone someone needs this uh you know it might be safety it might be health it might be fun uh it might be educational it might be um you know money saving whatever it is uh you've got to combine those two things together you've got to be able to show the product and you've also got to be able to show that there are many benefits of the benefits of not owning it or or are lower than the benefits of owning it. <laughs> that's right. And, and again, that's a, an, aggre a, an aggressive attitude about how you brand. Another aspect mm -hmm. of, of all this is gifting. Yes. If, you're, if you're advertising implores or implies gifting, then both men and women can buy it. If, if it's not necessarily for them, but the benefit is so significant or the success that seems so significant, it looks like that could be the gift I'm looking for. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, is that the hula hoop, they gave away thousands of hula hoops to make millions of dollars. That's right. You know, so getting it out, getting your product out, depending on, you know, it may be a, at a price you can't give it away or it may be a service that you, uh, you know, are reluctant to do for free. But, uh, you know, consider that aspect uh, that uh, there are plenty of uh, ways that you can get, uh, you know, get your product and your name out there. Uh, but uh, you've got to tie the product and the benefits together. Uh, the use of the product may, uh, is a benefit to the uh, user. End user. One, one, one final piece of advice, and this is just advice for, as a consumer. Uh, don't give something free away and ask for a credit card to do it or yeah. credit card number. Um, I think that's the biggest failure uh, that I've seen in marketing in, in the last 30 years it's been going on now for 15, 20 years. Oh, we get, we're giving away a thousand bottles today or, you know, you get a month free and, you know, you call up, you go through this whole registration. They ask you everything and in, in, including your underwear size. And then they ask you for your credit card and your credit card number. Yeah. But you get a, you know, a free trial for a month or you get a free bottle. No, don't do that. Yeah. Get all the information, <laughs> let, give away the product. Like you said, Sure. And you know yeah. what? If the product's good, if it's beneficial, like we've discussed today, if it's something that people find they need, they mm -hmm. will go back and they will then give you their credit card number. That's, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. If you build a better mousetrap, people will be to be to path to your door, but they've got to know where the door is. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> got the doorway in and the doorway out. That's right, man. You gotta find you gotta find your way in and gotta find your way out. All right. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for us. Hey, don't forget we are on radio on Saturday. Uh, Tom and Shane Business and Politics. We'll talk about how business and politics gel or don't gel. And we got a lot to talk about on Saturday, of course. So you can listen live anywhere in the world, KMMSAM.com. You don't need a credit card. You don't need to leave any personal information of any kind. All you do is go over there and listen live. And you can call us, you can text us, and uh, we'll talk to you just like normal human beings. And if you miss 
any of our past uh, shows or any of our past uh, uh, videos, you can watch or listen to them at KMMSAM.com. Click on Tom and Shane's podcast, and um, we will uh, we will be happy to uh, take your comments and everything over there. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for us today, of course. So we will see you uh, next Tuesday with a video, and uh, we will talk to you on Saturday. So Indeed, together. Together, as always. <laughs> Bye for now.